Members of the company, this is your places call. Places, please. Places for the top of the podcast. Places, please. Get ready for a behind-the-scenes look at the glitz and not-so-glam of Broadway, education, and everyday life with Uncommon Sense. Join hosts Christopher Smith and Sharna Lopez as they bring you the best stories and shenanigans that seemingly prove how elusive common sense can really be. So take a little time for yourself to hang out with the dynamic duo Sharnifer. And no leaving early, because you might just miss that 11 o'clock number. Stand by music. Music. Go. Uncommon sense The eleven o'clock And we are Sharnifer. Sorry, we are in frame. Out we of are. Frame. We're in frame. We're in frame, y'all. Welcome, Sharna fans. Sharna fans. To the White Claw sponsored, not yet sponsored. <laughs> not yet. Mango. <laughs> Mango. Mango. It's the best. Sorry, we can all put them down now or drink them. We don't have to be like that. Hi, everybody. Hello. So today we have a relatable guest, I shall say. Oh. Whoa. That's a really great descriptor Thank word you. for this friend. Thank you, because this friend of ours, this particular Sharno fan, is um related to a previous guest named Maddie. Mm-hmm. So who's this one, Sharna? Well, um, I'm going to have to go and give a little more introduction, but um, the incomparable, Ooh, incomparable, the ever so uh, witty, witty, smart, smart, my puzzle loving Oh, you love puzzles? I didn't realize this. Who will play any board game ever and nail it, Mr. William Frederick Parker Young. Did you know that that's his name? Christopher? Yes, I did okay. know. But... Sorry, it's Parker, everybody. Parker's here. Hello, hello, hello. I've already but... talked like three times. I don't know if I was supposed to or not. Whatever. <laughs> it's all good. It's but, all good. Um, given name is William Frederick Parker Young, and I didn't learn that about him for a while, but now. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you about that story later, Parker, so don't let me forget okay. the college name story. But um, we have Parker, okay. Parker today, everybody. Ooh. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us, Parker. Thank yeah. you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be a part of the pod. Yes. Um, the pod. To talk pod. nonsense. I know. Well, and this is similar to when we had your sister on, but we just had a five-hour, five, four-hour yes. rehearsal together. Yes. So I find that these episodes are actually quite funny when we come out of a rehearsal together because <laughs> we're kind of already like on the train, you know? Right. Totally. And our non-sponsored sponsor for this episode has not been uh, helping the runawayness of <laughs> Runawayness of the train. Yeah. Runawayness, I like it. I think it's only helping. I mean, True. only I love helping. It. White Claw, if you're listening, sponsor just, us. <laughs> just get on the train. Come get on, on the train. All right, we're gonna do what we do with every guest, uh, Parker. But yeah. we're gonna start with kind of your background. Uh, actually, uh, before you do that, I will start with how I met you, and then we can kind of fold in Christopher since he met you a little bit later. But similar to Maddie, um, I met Parker. His very first musical it was your first musical ever right Parker? it was my very first yeah like anything so parker walked in and i'm gonna find a picture for our insta i've got to find a picture for our insta um and he walked in to our charlie and the chocolate factory Willy wonka auditions and i said give me this theater child or give me death because you <laughs> were so darn cute and i love the kids that are like how old are you 10 yeah i think i had just turned 10 and he comes in and he's like, you know, his mom, I had already known a little bit. I knew he plays, you know, he plays baseball and but he likes to sing and he really wants to try this. I'm like, cool. You know, I'm thinking he's going to be like tree number five or we'll throw him as like Oompa Loompa 37. <laughs> and he comes in and he like is full 
out, like singing all the songs. And then I'm like, can you do a bell kick? And he's like, yeah. And he's a bell kick. And I was like, sold, sold. The show is cast. <laughs> and Parker is uh, going to be uh, Charlie Bucket. And so that yeah. was our first experience together, which grew into a long time together at the music room where Parker grew up doing theater. I'm sure he'll talk about. And then through a Spotlight, where we are now as a student, as an actor, as a performer, our families grew very close together. We're very good family friends. But now my exciting part, and I, I hope for you too, Parker, is um, now Parker directs for me, which yeah. I think is the best and similar to Maddie, getting to see people who you've known for a while and and taught kind of in a setting, classroom directing, kind of doing that on their own. So that's my background with Parker. <laughs> and in the meantime, Christopher, what was your first introduction to Parker? Honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> really? Chicago? No. I think the first time Chicago? we worked Chicago? together was Chicago, Great. was that summer. I mean, I think we had met Yes, we definitely had in passing. Like, we knew each other, but we had never... It was just, like, going to see shows, I think, at OSHA yeah. and being like, oh, this is Christopher. Like, <laughs> we're like, okay. The famed Christopher. <laughs> Thank you. The famed. Thank and you. Parker, was Chicago your first directorial thing with us? Was that your first show that I kind of gave you some... Uh, technically... I blocked a scene the very first time we did Legally Blonde. Mm. Remember oh. that? Oh. It was, I'll never forget it. Technically, you let me block the scene. And I was in the show, so the fact that they're trying to let me do that was crazy. I do but, remember. Um, uh, I did the scene where the girls, the Delta News come out when Elle just got broken up with. And they're like, uh, he's in the magazine. Like, or we have, they sing that little song, that little reprise. Mm -hmm. And I did that. Yes. That was like my very first, I think. That's crazy ever. that you remember that. I love that. Yeah. Because I didn't remember that till right now. But yeah. yes, you kind of have always been mature for your age and a little, I don't say above, but just a little more on top of things. Well, height-wise, I, I definitely was above. Above, yes. Always. <laughs> my daughter calls Parker tall friend, or did when she was younger, and so tall friend Parker. Yeah has always been his, his yes. little thing. So then we've done a bunch now all together. And clearly this summer we're working on a show together, which is awesome. But Parker, why don't you enough about us, Parker, <laughs> tell us kind of your journey. And I kind of gave the whole, you know, theater at 10, but maybe a little before that and how you got into theater and, and college and how you ended where you are. Yeah. So, um, I, it's so funny, like with what you just said, because the only thing I really ever remember when I first started theater was my sister had already been doing theater at the music room. And I kid you not, I went to every single one of every single show that she was in. Oh, what I a good brother. loved watching them. And I remembered like the only ones I missed where she was in anything goes at one point as an angel. And I was like sick and I couldn't go to a few of the shows. So <laughs> then one summer I didn't have like anything planned and I just remember sitting in the car with my mom and my sister, and my mom was like, well, do you want to do this thing with Maddie? And I kind of said yes, and I don't really fully know why I said yes. I mean, I was 10, you know, so sure, who's to say? <laughs> and then I, you know, went out and did Willy Wonka and got Charlie, and I think – getting pushed into the deep end of being an important character within that show, arguably a vital character in that show. <laughs> Perhaps, um, if you will. Was just kind of what I needed to then be like, oh, I love this. I love this a lot. And then started doing theater, um, like, I don't know, roughly three shows a year, I think, all the way through senior year of high school, um, through community theater. I did none of it through my high school. And Parker, some of those, I'm like, as you're talking about, Willy Wonka, and then I'm like picturing you there. Yeah. Some of your friends that you are still very close to, to oh, yeah. this day, you met in that show. Literally. Shout out to Molly Adams. And Maggie. Keely Gaeta, Maggie Gidden. Oh Keely my Gaeta. gosh. Yeah. Literally like these <laughs> yeah. people that I still talk to. Oh, it's so crazy that I met. I, I mean, it's... A crazy thing about getting older is when you have lifelong friends like that, you sit there and go, oh, I've known you for 15 years, yeah. which is so weird. And Parker, I know on, on a previous episode I mentioned when I met my girlfriends that I call my sassy six, my girls, we all met doing Annie when I was 10. And yeah. so it's a similar thing. That's oh like, gosh. that's the age. I know. That's a long, that's a lot of years that we've known each other. But <laughs> Just I, a few. Just I a few. That. Just a few more than me. Yeah. <laughs> I love that you did, you did theater not at school. Yeah. Sorry, continue on. I didn't mean to side sidetrack you, but I just thought of that, that you made some lifelong friends there. So theater through community theater, not theater through, through high school. Theater through community theater. And then um, as I was in high school, I started realizing that maybe 
the I loved the arts and I loved being a creative, but I maybe didn't want to be on the stage as much as I wanted to be behind, you know, the behind the table. Um, and so then kind of started shifting my attention towards there. That's when I did that first scene with Sharna in Legally Blonde and ended up going to college um, at St. John's University uh, all the way in New York and had no intention of doing theater at all. My school didn't even have a theater major. It doesn't have like any arts. It only had those things through extracurriculars, extracurriculars. Extra? curriculars <laughs> i didn't know that part and yeah in clubs and so there was a club on campus called the chapel players theater group and i they did adam's family it was like the first big musical and i remember going to the info session i remember basically going to everything except the audition and i didn't audition and i didn't do it and i did a whole semester for the first time in 10 plus years of doing absolutely no theater at all and I remember going into the next semester and being like, yeah, that wasn't it. Mama, that was not it. I need <laughs> I need to do theater. Like, I love this. And I ended up going out for their um, straight play that they did, Boeing, Boeing. Um, and I ended up getting cast in it. And it's like a cast of six. And I was just like, God, I love this. And so then my college experience started getting dominated by Chapel Players Theater Group, where I ended up going on the e-board. I ended up becoming the president. I ended up producing several of the shows. And Everyone who's up, listening, this is not surprising. <laughs> this is directing. Parker's MO for everything he does. <laughs> he just takes over the world. So here we okay, go. Okay, carry on. Yeah, so then I ended up uh, really taking hold of that other side with producing and directing and kind of having my first full show that I directed on my own. Um, and it was amazing. And then... Which was what? Um, Peter and the Starcatcher. Which, which is was, not an easy show to direct, no. I will say. And mm -hmm. and I fought really... I knew I was directing the show that year, and I fought really hard for it. And everyone was just like, okay, if you want to do it. And I said, I want to do it. Um, and then I finished school, and it came back, and I have like a full nine to five, and I still do crazy drives from Los Angeles down to Orange County to direct and be a part of this because yeah, it's just, I, it's, I did that little stint of not doing it and went never again. I'm not, <laughs> not having this as a, a part of my life in some way. You need way. that creative outlet. Yes, absolutely. And I just think, I don't know. It's, it's that thing of when you find something that you know you love and on top of that can yeah. have the confidence to be like, I'm also good at this. It's yeah. that it's that love of like not only do I love this but I know that I do this and can do it well and I need to stand in that confidence yep. and know that like this is a space that I thrive in. I love that. I I think that that's important because at the level we're doing it and and Again, I feel that our youth theater I just told my girlfriends this the other night on the drive home Parker. I was like I was never this good as a kid. Are you kidding me? I feel yeah. like our students that we have and our cast members these kids are phenomenal. Seriously. Mm -hmm. And so I find that the caliber and the level and the expectation is high, but I agree with you where I see you, I see you blocking. I see you working. I see you with the kids. I see you with the cast and the organization. And, and I think some people until they direct don't really understand all of the things that go into re to directing, right? Yeah. It's the same thing with musical direction, Christopher. Like everyone says, oh, it's, you're just teaching the music. They're and I'm plunking like, plunking some notes. Yeah, like, they're just teaching please. some harmonies. And I'm like, Christ of all music does everything <laughs> for us. It's the same with directing. And I think you kind of swept into it so gracefully, Parker. Oh, and I know it. you do, um, you do very well in that area and I like that it can be fun. I yes. always have people ask me that and you'll probably have people ask you as you get older and especially if they've seen you and know you were a performer like do you miss it? Do you miss performing? I said you know what sometimes I do and I'm sure you're, you're still you're much younger than me but like just our rehearsal last night I got in the car and I was like dang I love this like yeah. I love seeing the students get it and knowing that you are in a way helping them you're not on stage you don't get the glory in that way but you see that kind of light clicking and it's it's a hobby too right it, it helps with your creativity even though you're not the one on the stage per se totally because it's still also as a director like it's still your creative vision you're not the one like saying the lines or singing the words but like you're the one up there giving them the blocking, telling them 
like, hey, let's maybe rework this scene so it fits more into the themes that I'm thinking of for this. Like, I ever since I was little, and my parents could tell you this, I... I have been like born to lead. I love being in charge. I still love, to this day. Still I love this being day. in charge. And but I love it's one of the qualities I actually like about you, Parker. And it's not in a bad way. Like it's not you're not being a leader in a bad way, Mr. Bossy yeah. over here. No, <laughs> and I will. And what? And what? <laughs> yes, and um, yeah. I just I've always loved being that person, and like I guess having eyes on me. Uh, which is probably why performing was a very great thing when I was younger. And so there, it's just nice, I don't know, having influence. Yeah. It's, it's And I think awesome. you're a good collaborator. I will say that Important. in having worked in this industry now quite a long time, and Christopher, I, I know you and I have spoken about this before, but there are certain people that you're like, yeah. okay, I worked with you. Thank you. Oof. Next. Oh, yeah. And, and that I list think is definitely longer than the other one. <laughs> But it's true. And there's nothing, honestly, I, I always tell my students, like, there's nothing wrong with that. Someone else may work really well with that person. Yeah. And it's just a personality thing. But uh, I, Christopher and I, obviously, the second we started working together, I was like, okay, we are each other's work spouses. And we, like, we found get our people. it. We, yeah, we just knew totally. we worked well together. And I directed you and was a teacher. I even taught you in a tap class. Oh yeah. Parker. Um, oh yeah. So it was interesting to bring you onto the other side and as an adult. And I think even today there was a scene that, that Parker had blocked and I leaned over and I was like, Parker, what if, what if you did this? And you were really great. And like, I don't see it that way, but there's no like fighting or any sort of like, well, mine's better. It's, it's a collaboration. And I think you're really good oh, at yeah. that. You're very good at collaborating. It, but let's not pretend you don't think that in your head. You're like, oh, mine's <laughs> better. You're like, uh, it was perfect the exact way I thought of it. Thank you so much for your input. Thank you so much. But no, not today. Thank you. No. But I appreciate that. Yeah. That you have your, like, not opinion, but the way you are picturing it or visioning it or whatever your motivation is for that scene. I, and you held yeah. to that. I think, I think, you know, getting into a field like this, the people that can't collaborate with others has always boggled me. Even, even though sometimes I'm just like, I know my vision. But I also have to – you have to step back, especially in, like, a director role and be like, well, I could have tunnel vision. Hearing other people's ideas just because I think, you know, what I originally thought was great doesn't mean that there's not something else that's better suited for what we are working on out there. Yeah. And it's, it takes a – certain level to just step back and be like no i love what you just said and like let's work on it and let's build off of it because at the end of the day again i'm not the one performing it and i think that that's i think students have told me often and christopher i know this is for you as well it, i think that if the kid is performing it and they have something like we had a kid today what if i try it this way what if i say that and i'm like cool try it like yeah i'm not opposed to it i like it helps this foster the creativity in a rehearsal room and I love that Christopher and I, we talk about staying in each other's lanes, but we oftentimes, you know, want to go over in the other <laughs> lane. And that's okay. Because I do think sometimes you're not the only person and that's what it means to be on a creative team yeah. and yeah. to talk about things. And it helps it become, you know, collectively what you want to do. Totally. Um, I want to go back, Parker. We kind of went through your theater college experience, but what did you actually study in college? Oh, so in college, I went to school for film and television. Uh, and I kind of concentrated on screenwriting and producing so i and i'm sure again people could tell you this i have been writing since i was a nugget um <laughs> a wee nugget a wee nug uh i remember <laughs> a wee nug hold I... <laughs> on white claw um sponsor us okay 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 <laughs> Uh, Sorry, Parker. I Are remember writing it? like my first story in fourth grade, uh, and it was about uh, all of these animals that go into space with their giraffe oh. teacher. Yeah, I with their what teacher? Their giraffe teacher. So like the teacher kind of like was a, a giraffe. Mrs. Frizzle, who's a giraffe? Yeah, kind Perchance? of. Totally. It's giving like Finding Nemo, the manta ray, oh. but but all of these safari animals are in space. Great. So and I remember the safari animal. that was kind of the premise of it. I r started writing scripts in high school. I and I think this builds into the director part of everything. Mm -hmm. It's just being a storyteller. I love 
telling stories. I love sitting around people and being like, oh my God, this thing happened to me and sitting you and like sending you into another world. But yes, so that I, is I went to college. Correct. Yeah. And Parker, on that storytelling note, I remember, I don't know, maybe you had more than one, but you had like these murderous three birthday parties at your house oh. that were so epic. People would talk about them for months beforehand. And he had full scripts and like costumes and everyone had a character. And I was like, dude, I just went to like the roller skating ring for my birthday. You went like full out. You were super into that. I can't believe I even forgot about that. Yeah, I used to, for my friends, write murder mysteries, and they weren't even scripted. That was the craziest part, mm. is they were unscripted content where they basically all, it would be a theme. I remember we did like Twisted Disney, so it was gender, gender bent Disney characters. Okay. We did Clue, we did Decades, and you would have to come dressed up, and it basically turned into like a really extravagant game night where you need to win games to get advantages and clues were hidden around the house and like you, Do you had hear how to excited he is about this garner <laughs> enough clues to like figure out who the killer is and someone's the killer and they know that they are and they're trying to sabotage people <laughs> oh it was and and the best part about those times i did like four or five of them is my friends like unapologetically we're like we're in this oh like we're jumping into it and we are trying to win and that's what made it 10 times i feel like can we do it again so christopher and i can attend one oh you should i mean i feel like it could be much more i mean broadway musicals right for our theme that's too easy we all come as characters (laughs) winning my only requirement is christopher has to be alphaba that is not a problem painted green (laughs) So quickly. I just don't that know why I, I love so then the what's my character if you were going to assign me a character if Christopher's off about um, you can think about it it can come later to you I'm sure. putting you on the spot hair no <laughs> cats <laughs> please come as a cat come as a cat <laughs> the jellicle ball oh gosh oh, oh, man. Do, 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 I'm sorry do, do, Parker do, do, I have a tendency do, do. as Christopher can tell you to hijack our interviews oh, yeah. it's all good Christopher I love you but go back to um <laughs> college so degree in film oh, yeah. and television screenwriting and then, um, is that still something that you want to pursue and you want to do? Yeah, totally. I I currently work in the entertainment business at a production company, um, and I love it dearly. Uh, I, I really do love my job, which not a lot of people can say sometimes. Truth. And, you know, I still have to remind myself that I am of a certain age that allows a lot more space for growth. I'm still very early in my career. I've only been out of college for like, oh God, four years now? Has it been four years? When did yeah. you graduate? What year? I graduated in 2020. I'm the I'm go. the COVID class. Yeah, four I'm years. Uh, I'm the lucky COVID class. I actually finished college in three years. Okay. I graduated a whole year early. That doesn't surprise me. You guys, Parker, is that, <laughs> I keep calling you a kid, but you're like a grown human. Sorry. But that that's always been you. Like Parker yeah. was the cast member that would come in and he would not only know all of his lines, he'd know everyone else's lines. Of he course he would also, he did. you know, be the kid meticulously taking notes and probably like going home and rereading and questioning, why did Sharna tell me to do this? Okay, I'm going to ask her that tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Like you've always been that way. So that doesn't surprise me that you graduate, graduated so early. Yeah. Which... Did you like your time in New York Park? Did you like it there? I did. I I think – so I lived in the same place in the same room my entire life before college. And we – because I'm the youngest of three and we were all very busy kids, you know, we didn't get to travel much as a family, especially as I got older because there was simply no time. No. You know, sports seasons would end and start as – dance seasons were beginning and ending and we were in shows and it just, it wasn't a possibility. Um, And so I remember when college came around, I like very adamantly was like, I'm leaving. Sorry, everyone. I'm leaving. (laughs) Goodbye. And like, it was a little, probably a little harsh, but I was like, I'm going away. And that away is probably to New York, like New York. That's where I want to go. And so going there, I absolutely loved it. I'm so grateful that I pushed myself to do it because there were times, especially at the beginning, you're living across the country as like an 18, 19 year old and you're just kind of like, I got to figure it out. Like I don't have my parents near enough or easily accessible enough to kind of coddle me in this situation. I think the other thing that I loved about it was I learned that I did not want to live in New York full time. I learned that I love the city. I love the energy. It will be a place I want to visit the rest of my life. Oh my God, I am not living in those winters. (laughs) Absolutely not. Isn't that interesting? Grew up in Southern California. If I don't see the sun for more than a week, I am down for the count. Yeah. It's interesting. I think a lot of 
younger people realize that or the other way around my sister who was on here she went to nyu and then like fell in love with that city and i was like peace i'm, yeah. I'm good i had eight <laughs> yeah. days here i am good because it is a very big change and i think that's a big change it's one thing you go to college and you go away to college and you're in a maybe not a smaller town or like somewhere different but like new york city that's yeah. that's a huge change but i'm not surprised you did well you're very independent and you're very yeah. mature for your age and always have been so I think that was a really great experience for you. I forgot that it only took you three years. Yeah. Over a cheap. Which I'm very grateful for because I would have been 2021 and hearing my friends and the like final true COVID year of like school, yeah. mm. they said it was miserable and it sucked and it was nothing like any of the other. So I was like, people used to ask me, they're like, are you like, do you think you're rushing it? And maybe yes or no. I had been doing school at a pretty high level rigorous level for a while and i was so over it yeah. i was so over tests i was so over sitting in a classroom i just wanted to have something new and that something new was work unfortunately you learn that work is basically just like school <laughs> and you're just like oh sure i'll fill out an excel sheet does everybody hear that all these kids who are like it's gonna be great when i graduate yeah. college i'm gonna live my life it, work is the same yeah <laughs> some jobs are great and more exciting obviously than taking tests but like you still have to do paperwork and you still have deadlines and you still have people asking for stuff it doesn't really change what is but your... you make money yeah. money That's is true. good true. money money money, money. Mm. Must be funny in a rich man's world. Love it. Name the show, Sharna fans. Name the show. Name it. Name the band. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. Also. Correct. Um, Parker. Yes. What would be Sharna. your dream job? What's your dream job? Like, if you could pick any mm. job. I mean, I would be, um, I will be an independent, like, writer, director, producer. Love that. Of. I could see you. Oh, God. Film or television. I honestly, I. I hope to kind of achieve a certain level of people trust me to do it all. Yes. Oh, I love that. Because then you can kind of do different things. Yeah. I Would you ever be interested in writing for sitcoms? Oh, totally. I feel like you have that comedic timing well, and that comedy that I see <laughs> in sitcoms. You know how many times I've watched shows and I'm like, Parker should play that role. Or Parker would have written that. Or oh. Parker would have, like, I think of that often. I feel like you have that funny comedic timing that you would have in a sitcom writing sitcoms i like it i think yeah don't you think Christopher? i think that's correct right yeah okay on that yeah. note what's the fa your favorite role you've ever played oh god you knew it was coming don't tell me you didn't like think no, about it right I... here <laughs> wait on the way here parker parker's like i listened to one podcast i was trying to get ready okay i got one <laughs> podcast under my belt and then he like made a comment about how he like we said 30 10 and christopher's like we've said that like nine times and i drag me <laughs> to the viewers he sort of threw him under the bus but um, it's okay parker it's all right but you knew i was gonna ask you that question Come favorite on. role i've ever played okay oh uh, gosh there's so many good ones well you could choose a couple it doesn't have to be one yeah I, I will say the two that really speak to me are the two most recent ones i gotta play leaf coney bear and spelling b i knew it. which I was love leaf coney bear was and one of b. my top dream roles i've wanted to play ever since i was like in seventh or eighth grade so the fact that i gotta do that let alone at like the collegiate level was insane to me i'm sort of sad i didn't get to see you play that yeah it's... i feel like you are leaf coney bear <laughs> yeah no i mean hey the shoe fits I mean, kind of kind yeah. i mean within reason yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. within reason it's so no crazy. i i i i don't know if i'm exposing one of my friends here but i had a really good friend who ended up being an assistant director for that show and she told me way after the fact that when we went in for the auditions. We all had like three different monologues we could pick from. And one of them was a leaf monologue. And I was like, I'm obviously going to do that because this is really the only role I want in this show. You could also play Barfay, by the way. I was oh, going to say you. 100%. Yeah, totally. 100 and I fart. did it. She was so funny. I like did the monologue and then we all had to sing like a, a section of the opening number. And I played it as leaf. And I guess I left the room and the director turned to everyone and said, so should we just stop looking for Leaf at this point? Like, I mean, yes. and that was such oh, a confidence boost of just, if there's one thing I know I do well, it's audition well. Because I'm a big believer that like, you just leave it all in the room as much as you can. Like, you yes. have literally nothing to lose in an yeah. audition room. So there's no point going in being timid or not acting a fool. To my second point, the other role that is really a top tier one was 
uh, the one and only play I've ever done, Boeing Boeing. I, I was going to ask Robert. you about this story if you didn't tell it, so I know okay, you're going to tell it. Okay, so now. this is a great – to all the auditioners out there, this is exactly why Listen you Listen up. Here we go. Public service announcement. Give it your all. This was my very first time auditioning in college. I knew no one. I went in. I would never done a play before. And I go in, and they have, like, scenes, and so – Robert, the character that I ended up getting cast as, he is written as from Minnesota. And I was sitting there going, I have no clue what, like, a Minnesotan accent is. Minnesota. It's like, don't you know? No, it's Canadian, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, they go down to the store and they play the hockey and they're doing all the things. Oh, did you? Um, Yeah. But did you get your soap? Oh, yeah. You know? In the washer and the dryer? Yeah, right? Oh, go go Toronto Blue Jays. (laughs) I'm not um, good at accents at all. And so those who don't know the show, basically every single character has an accent from around the world. There's I was a German. Say, I don't know the show. There's a German, there's an Italian, there's a New Yorker, there is um a Minnesotan and um another one. All of that to say. I didn't know how to do that accent and I wasn't gonna try and learn it. So I went, you know what? I'm just gonna pick my do? own accent. Oh no. Oh and no, what'd you do? What'd I you went do? in there and like three other people kind of went up and did their things and like no one was doing an accent. And in my head I went, I'm about to blow these people away with an insane creative choice. Okay. And I get up there. Buckle and, up people. And they go. like say the first line to me and I go, Well, I don't know what to do with that. And I mm-hmm. rifled the most thick mm-hmm. southern accent that I could muster because it was the only one I felt confident enough in. And the other actor looked back at me like, what? <laughs> and then he kind of tentatively said his next line back to me, and I just kept going. Yep. And I did this full Southern accent, and I remember this one girl, Selena, I had, she had, like, kind of said hi to me and was, like, being like, oh, I don't know you. Like, what's your name? I remember after doing that scene, I came and I sat down, and she looked at me, and she was like, that was incredible. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> I immediately was given a callback for literally that same day, and I kept doing the accent, and no one else was doing an accent the entire time, and I kept doing it. I kept just doing all of my comedic things and building on the accent, and then next thing I knew, it was literally down to me and this other guy, and I, I got a call like an hour after leaving the room that they wanted to give me the role, and it, it literally is the lead in the show. Like, Did he, you keep the southern accent through the show, or did you have to learn Minnesota? Yeah, I did. So okay. they had asked me uh, – they had Changing asked me, it. like, hey, can you just do your – in the audition, like, can you just do your normal voice? And I remember doing it being, like, the southern accent slipped out a lot. Um, and then when we got to the rehearsal room, I was like, so I'm doing the southern accent, right? And they're like, oh, yeah, absolutely. We <laughs> absolutely Which loved it. Which is so fun. It. So you got to kind of, like, yeah. change up the character. But and make it I was just this, like, you know, in a org like that, it's a lot of p- – people staying within the org and so i was just this kind of nobody that came out of nowhere and got cast in this role and it was an incredible experience because the again the cast is only six people um but kelly did that show one of her favorite shows i think she's but done that too. is like a big reason why i'm a huge believer of just like when you go and audition you have absolutely nothing to lose there's no such thing as making a fool of yourself and do you get nervous room. when you audition Yes, I do. I get nervous when I perform. Yeah, I but do it's, too. It's like those butterfly things of like, I just need to say that first line. I need and, to sing that yeah. first lyric mm-hmm. and I need to like jump out of it and be on a roll. And then after that, it's just like no stopping. I used to hate auditions and call, not auditions. I used to hate callbacks because my paper would shake oh. when I would be in callbacks. Um, yeah. Um, and I would try my hardest to memorize it, but I'd still right. always want to hold it. And I, I see kids all the time and I always tell them, dude, that was me. Like, and it's that energy, you know, and on stage that would never happen because you don't have anything and you get a little more comfortable. But I remember feeling that and Ruby gets nervous now, you know, and I tell her that I'm like, nervous is okay. You just have to learn how to control it. Totally. Um, I just, I've worked with you so much as an actor <laughs> that I don't think I've ever seen you nervous. <laughs> so I don't know. That's interesting. <laughs> I to get me. that from my friends a lot. I get really nervous sometimes out in public, like in, uh, and like group settings and stuff. You and your uh, sister, man. And get like overthinky about things. And... That's so funny, Parker. I would net your sister, yes, but I would never think. And that I bring about that you. up to my friends sometimes, and they're always like, "I literally have never thought that about you yeah. ever." Friends that I've known for years, and it's just like, "Well, yeah, I'm an actor. Are you kidding me?" <laughs> but it's also telling Mama, that like I'm you an don't... actor, Mama. I'm an actor. <laughs> It, 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 you don't know everything about what's going through a person's no, brain. Totally. You know what I mean? And 100%. I, yeah. So I think that's – it's telling. Like, yes, ma'am. This, people are This people. noggin is running a million miles a minute. I know. Like, it, so Sharna and Christopher can both kind of attest to this. 
I am someone that loves a quip. I love a little remark. Mm -hmm. I love a little joke. And I am constantly thinking about when in a conversation, I'm like, listen to this person, Parker. And then they'll say something and I'll be like, wait, this is a reference to a joke that I can make right now. Oh, it's so bad. It's That's so why we bad. Get along. Cause I'm the worst. I am the worst clearly on this podcast. Friends, my Sharna fans, you have all learned poor Christopher. God bless him. On I his journey said with like me. three words this episode, I think. <laughs> I didn't count them, but I think, ah, now I'm, oh gosh, I'm like breaking all the but things over here. That's what I'm here. saying. It's like, I'm the same way. And, yeah. you know, I, you find the people, and, and Parker, I actually think it's something that I, I try to work on because I'm never trying to be disrespectful. I'm just like, but I have something fun yeah. to add. And I want to yeah. say that, you know, yeah, and totally. I know you're the same way where you're like, okay, oh, that's going to be funny if I say that. And it always is funny. It's oh, always well, funny. I mean, I am the funniest in person in the room always. Okay. So I know I'm okay. going to say what I'm going to say and it's going to be all Except right. Except Christopher is here because all he right. kind of went up. He kind of went up we sometimes. Can, we can go at it. He gives you a run <laughs> for have, your money. I have, I have never really done it, but something that I wish that I tried and still kind of contemplated doing is improv. I was going to say, do you ever I, do improv? I've never done improv and I, I really think that that's something that, sorry, I would kill. I would absolutely kill. Parker, I think, okay, so. Yes, and, yes, and. Yes, I think correct. improv, you'd be great. I also think you'd be a good stand-up comedian. Ah. I actually think you'd you be good writing, at stand-up. You love writing, write yourself and I a think set. Because, what'd you say, Christopher? I said, you love writing, write yourself a set. That's what I'm what saying. I, I feel like because you have... <laughs> What, what if I already have? Somebody exiled says. me to the other side of the room so I can't hear you. What are you guys? I, so, Sharna, it's so funny that you bring that up because – segue. Every year when New Year's rolls around, I'm not a big, like, New Year's resolution person in the sense of, like, I'm going to drink less coffee this year, which I've never had coffee before. But I you like to say – never had coffee? What? Okay, we're going to so, pause there. Wait, I'm sorry. You don't know that about me? Okay. No. So you guys notice I never get no. Starbucks when you offer Starbucks for like rehearsals? Yeah, but like, okay. You Send never. Me... <laughs> yes, and <laughs> I, that means nothing to me. <laughs> they do not Wait, correlate. Parker, you, you've never ever had coffee or you tried it and you don't like it. Never had a sip of coffee before. Okay, but now I'm curious. Why? Christopher's taking over the interview because <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, so I always felt that I was a really energetic kid. And so my no. original reason, <laughs> my original reason was like, I don't need coffee. I just need five minutes to wake up and then I'm there. Uh, and then that was kind of in high school when my friends started first drinking it. And then as the years went past, like I saw them all become really dependent on it in mm. a way that I just didn't like. Mm. Which, like, don't get me wrong, I have my vices. <laughs> I am not. I am That's not vice shaming at all. <laughs> um, and so then it just became a thing of, like, oh, I don't really want to do it now if this is, like, what's going to happen after I have a sip of it. And then it kind of got to the threshold of, like, okay, well, at some point I'm going to have coffee in college because it's college. And, like, I'm going to have a sleepless night. And it mm -hmm. just didn't happen. And now... Honestly, I don't drink it so I can have reactions like you just gave. Like it's uh, like it's so like, it's now for the bit. Now yeah, it's, that's it's, what I'm saying. Oh, oh, if I will <laughs> do it for the bit, commit right. to Tenfold. the bit, yes. commit to the bit. It's, no, it's like it's like a pride thing now. Of just like I want to be able to say I've never had coffee. Yeah, well, it's like one of those things like when you like two truths and a lie, and yeah. then you're like, oh, I've never tasted coffee. People are like oh, that's <laughs> yeah, the that's lie, and you're like, that's the truth. I'm like, uh. okay, oh but God. also then, does that mean you've had? Do you still have things with caffeine then? Yeah, so okay. I mean, I grew up addicted to soda. Okay, love soda. My my boss, I love her dearly. She goes to Starbucks every time we're in office, and her big thing is like, if I am like asking you to walk over to Starbucks and pick this up, I'm getting you a drink. And I'm like, well, twist my arm, yes, please. And so I'll get like one of their like refreshers or like Matcha? something Matcha's like good. that. Um, now that the refreshers, I do want to say, refreshers have coffee in them. Coffee or ca the, just caffeine? No, right? I think they have the green coffee it depends extract, on which one. right? Oh, I don't know this. Starbucks, Searching. would Hold you on. like to Hold chime on. in? We're going to check it out. Like, Parker, that's something like, I did the not thing. know about you. I actually thought I knew, like, I feel like I know you so, so, so very well. That is really interesting. Yeah. Okay, so no coffee. No coffee for no you. No coffee. Not needed. I don't even know how we got on the coffee conversation. Well, Fred, I want to be taking about? the coffee break. Jumping into orchestra pit. You guys, so my favorite role <laughs> that Parker ever played. Oh my gosh, how did I forget about that role? I'm offended, but I'm not. It's fine. That's um, up there. That's so up there. Parker and I 
the very first time I ever directed How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, Parker, I cast as Bud Frump. And Parker was so funny. You were so funny as that role. And I, to the state, what I love is that you're an adult now. You can still play that role. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I oh, feel yeah. like, could you and please I play it again? To. Because just his choices and we have so many inside jokes from that. You were young too. You weren't that old. I was right? eight grade oh my gosh that's so crazy but just so incredibly 13, hilarious 14. that was a great role for you that was probably my yeah. favorite role i've seen you do no that was the role that um first of all the one and only time i've ever played a villain and i was like i'm destined to be the villain but don't you love that Destiny. he's a comedic villain i love and that he's comedic that was the big role that i finally like i had a taste of it when i played um barnaby in hello dolly because he has that whale bit that yeah. gets a lot of laughs but front was the one where i was like Oh, like I need to always be going for the comedy role because this is where I like need to live because yep. this is where I just feel like it feels correct. Um, and I spent a lot of my theater career being the like sidekick best friend goofball and I loved it. I yeah. know some people are like, I just want to be the lead. Like I had my share. I mean, Anna, get your gun. I played Frank and yeah. like, that's great and all, but like, music man, I, I want to make people laugh, um, and and that's just kind of a passion. What we were talking about beforehand was stand up and stand up. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I was talking about New Year's resolutions. I set goals every single year of things that I hope to accomplish, and I set four goals for this year, and one of them was to try stand up for the first time. Are you serious? Yep. That was li- so. That's why I was so when you July. brought it up. And we I mean, are a little we behind go. schedule. <laughs> I Hello? mean, one of the one of those goals was travel internationally, and I and went to that. Italy for the first that. time. So. I think if you wrote your own set, Parker, you're such a good writer, and you know your own comedic timing. I think if you have those things, um, I think you'd be great at stand up. I also think improv, like doing like you on Saturday night Saturday Night Live, uh, that actually I was kind of hoping you'd say that was your dream because I. I would yeah. kill to see you on Saturday Night Live. Thank you. Mm-hmm. However, I could never be on. SNL with you because yeah. I would pee my pants. Yeah. Like I can't, I, even tonight, there were like three things during rehearsal tonight <laughs> that we did or someone did. And Parker and I are just dying laughing. Like, yeah. I don't even, I started like trying to stab you with a pen. I don't know what I was doing. What? Did, what oh, you were doodling. <laughs> you were doodling. And I lean, I, I just like kind of under my breath went, are you tired over there? And you just went, uh-huh. No, you said, are you bored? Oh, that's what you said. Are you bored? And I oh said, my God, uh-huh. Bored over? I said, uh-huh. No, I, I literally it. have a note in my phone called Stand Up, and it has literally a bunch of really funny experiences that have happened to me that I'm just like, if I were to ever make a stand up set, this is where I would pull from. Yes. You know, and just like if I ever think of a funny little joke or like something like that, I'll, I will write it down. But I think that really falls back on your storytelling. Yeah. How you said you like to tell stories and you like to pull people in. That is exactly what stand-up yeah. is. And then you just have to find the comedy in it, right? Christopher Listen would come see your me. show. 100%. Christopher, oh. are you still with us? Sorry, we're taking over the show. Christopher was trying to dispel my make... coffee comment. Yeah, I did. I like Oh, research, it. research. Research. Yeah. Here we go. Are they all in there? They totally have green coffee extract. Mm. It doesn't feel the same, that? though. No, it does. it's not. It doesn't count. It doesn't I'm going to still like... hold two. I feel like I just want you to try it. I want you to yeah. taste it. It's so yummy. Uh, so, but that's the okay, thing is, I don't think I would find it yummy to begin but with. But you like, you like, like, we can, you know what sweets. we can do? We can gateway drug him. Yes. You... <laughs> oh. So we. <laughs> Gonna give me a frappuccino so, with whipped cream? Yes. The chocolate chunky chip or whatever? <laughs> Java chip frap, okay? Full but whip. But honestly, Parker, I think I think you Double would blended. like it. I think as an adult. Is it, coffee sweet, though? It can, I, oh, it definitely can be. But if you just drink it plain. I thought it, it was plain, known to be bitter. It is. If you drink okay. black, boring coffee. But now, yeah, in 2023, true. coffee's like yeah, fancy pants. Starbucks. Yeah. Like, you know, you got your white chocolate macadamia nut cold mm. brew. That is definitely that sweet. sounds like it would kill me. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. <laughs> no, the macadamia nut? Are, aren't they nuts? I have a tree nut allergy. Oh. To okay, the then yeah. You guys, and the Parker, dude, he didn't so know he had this allergy. Sorry about that. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know if I can have macadamia nuts. I don't think I can. No, I, no Let nuts the for record Parker. Reflect, he didn't... We will not be getting him a macadamia <laughs> you nut You can have the caramel coffee. one, okay? You can have the caramel yeah, one. Yeah, caramel. caramel. But yeah, Parker had a terrible allergy allergic reaction in high school after yeah, a volleyball a game that was that was scary park 
I, you know, wasn't scared during any of it. I know, that's what your mom says, and your mom was losing her mind. Mom, I would be losing Well, I mean, mind. your child is in front of you with hives all up and down their back and is, right. like, saying they, like, can breathe but are struggling to yeah. a little bit and, like, nope. need to go to the hospital. Nope. Right. And, like, I just sat there and, like, at no point in that entire process was, like, I afraid for my life. I knew that like stuff was going down and this really sucked and I had to go to urgent care and they were like, we don't have the supplies for you. So we called you an ambulance. Yeah. Oh, and they, the they ambulance literally, took you to they shock, literally right? gave me a Benadryl shot and like, they had me take my shirt off for a second. And my mom said my back was just covered in hives. And then the problem with a huge Benadryl shot is like, I just want to go to bed. Yeah. And my mom had to sit there in like the urgent care office being like, you cannot sleep right now. You are staying awake. Yeah. Absolutely not. And they basically came back and were like, which, by the way, I have never gone through an urgent care line so quickly. My mom walked in two seconds before me because I was trying to, like, throw up outside and I couldn't. And she maybe walked in 10 seconds before me. And in those 10 seconds, all she said is, I think my son's having an allergic reaction. I walked in and these people ushered me into a room faster than you could sneeze that's so great because yeah. because that's like obviously a very serious oh, thing right. and can right. kill people can change in very so quickly. quickly and we immediately were escorted into a room we immediately saw a doctor and they immediately gave me that benadryl shot like maybe within 10 minutes and then it was another like 20 30 minutes of monitoring me and they basically were like we need to send you to like a hospital hospital and yeah we don't trust that you could just be in a car. So we called you an ambulance. And that was the first time I've ever ridden in an ambulance. So no macadamia at cold no. brew for you. That's we will no. choose a different item. No, no, no. Yes. That is something new that I learned about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a crazy, um, crazy day. Learning new things. Out of volleyball what? tournament too. I know. Christopher, he's crazy. I'm your modern We're day turtle. little stuff. <laughs> um, any other questions, Christopher, that you have? I have a couple more, but do you have anything that you'd like to hear about Parker? No, because I – the one thing I wanted to ask about he talked about, which was what his day job was, because he had mentioned, you know, I have a nine-to-five. I mean, you do, but let's not pretend like it's <laughs> a cubicle nine-to-five. Let me it's, go sit no, in an insurance no. company. I don't. I, I work in <laughs> entertainment, entry. and I really don't know, like, what the policy is. On no, it. I like that you said in entertainment. Like, saying where oh, I work I mean, and stuff. I work at a – internationally known name i'll i'll drop that mic and flex on that moment um and i'm an executive assistant currently and i absolutely love it i love my boss um and, and I she love gets the you starbucks refreshers with, and i get yes. some starbucks refreshers from time to time that have coffee and, but not really yeah you know? and it's it's a really wonderful it's place to work coffee adjacent yeah. It's coffee adjacent. Coffee adjacent. They're cousins. They're cousins. Adjacent is one of Christopher's yeah. favorite words. Coffee adjacent. Adjacent. Can you spell adjacent? Um, I can. A, go, go for it. Oh. Do it. Do it. No, Sharna can. Sharna can spell adjacent. Turn. You watched me mess it up. You do it. Okay, I'll try. I was say, you just said A. You did not mess up the word. A, D, J. I feel like I'm going to spell and B. A, D, J. I've got a buzzer ready. A, C, E N T adjacent. Yay, Notice so how I knew he that uses his word. hand on the side of the microphone to spell out the words. I will say the only reason I brought that up is I am a awful speller. I'm a horrible, horrible speller for someone who loves to write. Thank That's God for autocorrect. That is interesting. Fun fact about Parker. He's yeah. a horrible speller and he's never had coffee. This is gonna and sound he was in spelling so, bee. This is gonna sound so it was <laughs> It was the first B I ever got. In school. In spelling? In fourth grade. Did you cry? Uh, No, I was deeply disappointed with myself uh, to the point that it scars me to this day. Spelling. I pay a therapist a lot of money to help me And work yet, there. we no, still haven't no. learned how to spell. Nope, and I still – autocorrect Great. ruined me. Yeah, and guess me. what? Now it doesn't matter. I know. Nope. nope it doesn't nope. matter, which is so crazy, right? Yeah, like, I, I'm an awful speller. And it's usually uh, – I don't even know. I'm an awful speller, which is so ironic that spell. I – When I did spelling bee, I was like – Girl, you got to memorize these lines. That's you got to right. memorize Capybara. Like, your yes. life depends on it. Capybara. Gosh, I love that show. Capybara. Oh, All man. these southeastern rodents or wherever the heck. Oh, South gosh, American. that show is South so American clever. Oh, thank you, South. Oh, it's brilliant. South American I had, rodents, I had right? some of my, I had friends sending me Capybara memes for years. I'm so sure. Funny. It was great. Um, Parker, if you could – and don't say Spelling Bee because I already know that's, like, the show you want to direct – Another show. Is there any other show that's like in your top five? Because I know Spelling Bee is probably your top. 
Um, Is there another show you'd like to direct? You know what show, and this may be like a weird pick, a show that I like deeply love because I think it is brilliantly written is Sister Act. Huh. Wait, what? Okay. okay. So if you don't know I Sister don't know Act, Sister Act, Act there, so I don't, I just, that's surprising to me. You need to go out there. The book is phenomenal and the music is excellent. Exceptionally is it amazing. based off the movie pretty closely? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I, okay. would say. I don't I know, know the, the show movie. either, really. And it's definitely a, a little bit older. It's the life I never led. I've heard it twenty five thousand. Oh, times. I'm sure. Do for you like the music, room? Christopher? I do. The show? Yeah, I do. Which is not even like sorry. Yeah, it's a great belty song. Not the best song in the show. Fair. Yeah. Their Tony performance of them at the Tonys, the cast does raise your voice, which is like the big end of Act One number where the choir like learns to sing for the first time. Uh-huh. Go watch it and go get chills. I'm telling you right now. It is exceptional. Patina Miller plays the uh, Sister Mary Clarence. And it is so, 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 so good. Parker, do you know, speaking of nuns, do you know the show Nonsense? Okay, so I've heard of it through you and my sister, but I don't know anything about it. I feel like that show would be right up your alley. It is. And I have not seen it since I was in high school. Um, but our local theater did it when I was in high school and my mom worked the show and I saw it several times in rehearsal and production. And I laugh. So it reminds me of something rotten where just the writing is so funny and it's a small cast. I think it's only six nuns or seven nuns. And the idea, like the premise of it all, I I would encourage you to research it. You, I think you'd really have a good time directing that show. It'd be super funny, super fun. Some good songs in it too. Older. Um, you know, nobody's screlting their face off as we do in modern musicals, but, yeah. um, <laughs> which is honestly great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know what? I just listened to a new, newer musical today. Shocked. I was listening to it and I was really enjoying it, but I also thought to myself, like, why does everything for the female singer have to be in the freaking heavens of the sky? Yeah, it's, it's the like same for the guys. You have I to know. Be a oh, yeah. And they sound great. So I don't want any – the people who are on the Broadway cast recording of Shock That is a, not a plus, the a point. That is not it's the not point. It's not the point. And I just had this moment of like, golly, now my students are going to listen to this as a newer Broadway musical. And I'm, they're all going to want to sing this song that mm-hmm. hits a I don't know what the heck in the heavens, you know? So Nonsense yeah. does not have that. And the comedy of the script of Nonsense is like – it you would you would really enjoy it. Yeah. Check it out. I think I think overall, like I know I obviously gave an answer. Um, but I don't I don't know if I really sit and like fantasize about directing specific shows. I, give me literally any comedy under the sun and I'll probably want to do it. Yeah. I, I would be so happy to go back and direct almost any show I've ever been a part of. Just like it's I think the fun part about it is finding, you know, your vision of it as the director and having been in it, it kind of, you can impart knowledge upon it of like what your experience was, but make it your own. I mean, I also got a direct Peter on the star catcher, which was definitely up there for many years of a yeah. show. Like I wanted to be a part of or direct. Um, but the, the, you know, there's, there's so many shows out there. Like, how do you even, so I know you, you said you, you would do any show you did. Um, yeah. or direct any show you did, but would you ever want to challenge yourself and do a drama? Oh. Um, well, yes. Let's okay. start there. Because I was like, Absolutely. the answer is like no. Like a, like a play or like a, jo- like a no, musical, like, like a musical. Sweeney Todd yeah, or like, like a, a Sweeney Les Todd or, a Les Mis or, like dog or something fight. epic. Oh, dog Love fight. Love dog fight. Um, or, oh, I just had one and it, like little Spring women? Awakening, mm. Little Women. I'd love to do Little Women. Yeah. I think I yeah. think you'd be great because you're about emotion and connection. I think it'd be good for you. I, it's funny because I don't – that's not the first thing that pops into my mind. Yeah. But that's a good question, Chris. Well, what, what's the phrase? The um, the difference between comedy and tragedy is is timing? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's something like that. Yeah, but it's, see a lot of people, if they mess up the comedic timing, it's a tragedy. Yeah. Well, because yes. that's the thing is, like, really the only difference between those things is where you place the beats. Mm-hmm. And I think that is what, um, as, like, a director, sure, everyone has their things and, like, their specialties. But it really is – sometimes that frustrates me when people are just like, well, what are you, like, what specific genre are you trying to pursue in your career? And it's like, I know that technically I do have to pick one. Because that's just kind of the way the world works a little bit, especially within the industry for breaking in in those purposes. But 
at the end of the day, I don't even write in a singular genre. Yeah. I have I have a comedy written. I have a thriller written. I Ooh, have thriller. a horror written. I'm here for all like, of it. I, 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 I think that they're – if you have the basic skill sets of being um, a director or writer or creative and you know how to build those things, it's just all about where you place the beats and how long you allow them to live. I'm sorry. You have a thriller. A horror. A horror. A, a comedy. comedy. Like screenplays? And I'm not just talking about last week, but <laughs> oh! I know. <laughs> screenplays, Parker? Or yeah. stage production? No, screenplays. Screenplays. Full, across full length screenplays. Movies and TV, yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. I'm over here just like making sure I get my kid to camp. What but the see, I, what? Well, I see, also, I was like, but also you have the children. <laughs> They're all alive. They're all alive and well. So, so really you're me. winning. Winning. Um, um, so with that, that, with that, I'm volunteering to make a cameo slash star in the thriller or the horror. As Alphaba? Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh yes. my God. Yes. 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 Correct. And um, and then I will write the score for it as well. Well, so back, based on Wicked, because we're full circle people here, we're storytellers. Um, one of my th one of my goals for the year, which I don't, this one's kind of fading quickly, uh, <laughs> is I really wanted to uh, write and direct my own short film, okay. and I did the writing part of it. It's just about finding the time okay, for directing. I'm, I'm sorry, we are taking a time out. How many? lofty goals my goal is like one thing you're gonna do stand-up you're gonna travel abroad you're gonna direct a screenplay you're gonna skydive you're gonna travel. what the heck yeah are those all for one year yeah what it must be like to be 25 <laughs> well it does you know I, I i don't have any other responsibilities other than like the you know work that's and amazing so i like I love try that. i i don't know i've years ago somehow had a shift in my mentality of just like i'm i really am always trying to push myself to be a better person and like push myself towards things that i want because quite frankly you are not going to achieve your dreams by just sitting within the four walls of your apartment or your room or your things of that nature and sure nowadays with social media that could be argued know, i'm right? not talking to you people <laughs> Okay. Um, but like you know, I would like a to say that part of this life... is not reflect the views of the hosts <laughs> necessarily. Um, I don't know. A big part of life is going out there, and I am such a. I talked about anxiety, but I'm also a people person. I do get charged, you know, in an extrovert way about being around others and people like not just anyone, but like people I really, really care about and like really love deeply. And so, it uh, it just. These lofty goals are ways of pushing myself to go out and do something new for me so I can grow, but also meet new people, build new connections, because that That's is That's where just, it's at. Yeah. That is where it's at, because you never know when you're going to randomly talk to someone who's like, oh my god, my best friend is this person, and I think you would really love them, and yep. you need to meet them, and that best friend is actually the booker at a very big comedy club, or yeah. they're a producer, and they're like, oh, you right? I'm actually looking for something like... That stuff just happens to people. Right. And it only happens to people because they're going out and they're like – They're doing things. They're connecting. Oh, they're being places. What was the great – I love I love an analogy, people. Um, it's – you never know when your wave is going to come. You just have to be ready to surf it. Yes. Oh. Like you just going have to Going in the be, episode you description. You have to <laughs> – Yes. Surfing. This whole episode has been about surfing the whole time. <laughs> Nothing else, just surfing. Like you have to know how to get up on the board. You have to know how to ride the wave. You have to know what your stance is going to be. But just because the wave isn't coming doesn't mean you can't be practicing those things and being ready for it when it does. That's right. Because oh you may, that may be the only wave that ever hits that beach. And with that. <laughs> but actually. Parker like... out. <laughs> right? I know. That's like perfect segue to be like, Parker is yeah, the best. That's amazing. Yeah. But everybody needs to advice. listen to that. Everybody, especially up and comers that are yeah. like wanting to break into the industry in any facet. Like, you never know when that wave's going to come. So just keep honing your craft. Keep writing. Just because you're not making practicing. money or making fame off of what you're doing doesn't mean you're not putting in the work that eventually could lead to something more. That's 100%. right. 100%. Honing your craft, absolutely. Parker, 
Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, y'all. Park, I my don't fans. even know where the last however long went. But that's um, what's the best part about our yeah. podcast. And before we close, we just ended up saying that to somebody where we're like, nothing scripted. We just like bringing on cool people who we know are interesting and have yeah. a lot to offer. And then we just talk for an hour. Was it and an it's episode I missed? The best. <laughs> It's I'm going to listen to a podcast episode tonight and go, dang it, it was that person. <laughs> um, thanks for listening, Christopher. You yes. want to so, close this out? Like and subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram at Sharnifer Official. Maybe White Claw. Hello. Maybe. Um, and check us out at uncommonpod.com. If you want to learn more about us or have any questions, reach out to us through Instagram, whatevs. Thanks, Sharna fans. And Sharna fans. <laughs> and on that note, Sharnifer out. Look at Parker just smiling. I know. He's like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Are we still recording? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> This concludes another episode of Uncommon Sense. If you're ready for more of this fresh, hilarious, and unique perspective on the world of entertainment, education, and life, be sure to subscribe right now to catch every episode. If you gasped, laughed out loud, or even snorted, share the show with your friends and aspiring entertainers, because, let's be real, sharing is caring. For more Sharnifer, tune in to their witty insights by checking out the website uncommonpod.com or connecting on social media. Tune in next week and get the real insider scoop on another episode of Uncommon Sense.